The optimal settings to record in 720p in OBS Studio are quite simple. First, go down to the Settings tab in the bottom right-hand corner of OBS, and let's walk through all of the different menus that you need to pull up and enter different fields. Your first stop is going to be the Video tab right over here. Click that Video tab, and we're going to set your resolution and your frame rate. Critical fields to get this right. The most simple configuration with your base canvas resolution is just to set that at 720p which is 1280 by 720 as the base canvas resolution. What that means is that the canvas that you see down here where my webcam currently is will be 720p. And so you don't have to scale that up or down to reach 720p for your recording. You can literally see what it's actually gonna look like in the final version, if that makes sense. Here in your output scaled resolution, that's what the actual resolution is going to be of your recording. 720p is 1280 by 720. Make sure you have that selected. For your downscale filter, it's kind of irrelevant at this point because your canvas and your output are the same, so you don't need to be downscaling or upscaling anything. But if you can handle it, I recommend using Lanscos 36 samples. It maximizes the quality of anything you have to downscale or upscale in OBS. There are two very common frame rates that you will want to select when it comes to recording in 720p. So the most common, which I'm recording this video in, by the way, is 30 frames per second. This is great for on-camera content, for demos, for tutorials, for most forms of content. However, if you have content with lots and lots of action, like gameplay or high action clips or trailers with lots of movement, you'll want to select 60 frames per second. I'm going to go over the bit rates in a moment for each of those. For my project, I'm going to select 30 because that is the most common frame rate for most recordings. Hit apply down here at the bottom, but do not hit OK yet. Next, we're going to go to the audio tab right over here. This is where we will disable some things that make OBS confusing, I think, for a lot of users right when they get in. You're going to do a sample rate, that is whatever your capture device, your microphone, your uh, capture card, your camera, whatever it may be, whatever sample rate that device wants. Mine is 48 kilohertz, others are 44.1 kilohertz. You need to select which one is best for your device. 48 kilohertz is solid in most cases. What I recommend next is disabling every single audio device in this tab that you see in this area right here. The reason why is you should be manually adding every audio device that you want to use in OBS so you know it's there and it doesn't accidentally pop up down in your audio mixer and interfere with your recordings and confuse you. For example, as you can see below, I have manually added my microphone here. I didn't let OBS add it for me. I recommend taking control of your audio mixer by manually adding every audio source yourself. Also, it helps you fully understand what is going on in your project. Hit apply down here at the bottom, but do not yet hit OK. Next, we're going to go to the output tab, which is the most important tab in this process. This is where all the numbers are that you need to know. For your output mode, do not use simple. Use advanced, and you'll see why in just a moment. When you pull this down and you go to advanced, it opens up all of the options you need to know to have optimal settings. Skip the streaming tab today. I'll do separate videos on how to stream in 720p. Today we're going to go to the recording tab and the audio tab. Those are the two important tabs for the settings for today. Once you're at the recording tab, you're going to see all of these settings. Skip, type, leave it at standard. Go to your recording path and hit browse right here. Create a folder somewhere for your OBS recordings. I'm just gonna select one that I already made called OBS test. Make a folder for your recordings so you know where your recordings are actually going. I recommend recording to a storage drive if you have a storage drive. For your recording format, the most compatible recording format across all editing softwares and mobile apps and everything that you may wanna edit on is MP4. I recommend doing MP4. It will give you a warning about MP4s, about it being unrecoverable, I've never had a recovery issue using MP4. For audio track, just leave one checked here, and here is a critical setting. 
I'm going to try to explain this as simply as I can when it comes to your encoder. If you have a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card on your computer, select that option right here. It'll probably be called NVIDIA NVENC or just NVENC, N-V-E-N-C. If you have some sort of NVIDIA encoder available, use it. Because what that's going to do is that's going to take the load off of your processor on your computer and instead put it on your graphics card when you're recording. You want the load to be on your graphics card because it's a piece of hardware designed specifically to push video data, right? If you do not have a dedicated graphics card, that's okay. There's a really reliable option here called X264, which is the most common encoder to use, X264 will use your processor, the same processor the rest of your computer needs to do everything. It'll use your processor to do the recording. We're going to do our setup today using the processor method. All right. Your first setting down here is your rate control. I recommend leaving it at CBR, constant bit rate. So why would you do that? Your constant bit rate is going to have a consistent quality no matter what you're doing in your recording. If you use another setting such as VBR, which some people will argue for, your quality will go up and down and up and down depending on what's happening during the action in your recording. I don't recommend doing that because your recording can get pixely and it can go low quality and it can look really bad. So just do constant bitrate CBR. All right, if you are doing a 30 frames per second, which is what my project currently is, 30 frames per second, 720p recording, your minimum bitrate for your recording should be 5,000 kbps. That's your minimum. If you want to go up from there, cool, that's up to you. The higher you go, the higher the quality. But 5,000 is your minimum recording bitrate. All right, if you are doing a 60 frames per second project, 60 fps, your minimum bitrate that you're going to want to record in is 7,500 kbps. If you want to increase it from there, that's fine. But 7,500 is your minimum if you're doing 60 frames per second. Of course, you can check out the recordings, you can review the quality yourself, and see if you want to increase the bitrate and whether it makes an impact for you. In terms of the rest of the settings here, leave your keyframe interval at zero and leave all of these other settings at default. This will just be a good standard setup for you for a 720p recording. Great. Now at the bottom, hit apply, but do not yet hit OK. Your next stop, and a very important stop, is going to be the audio tab up here in advanced settings. Almost everyone misses this tab, and you are missing out on massive quality increases in your audio bitrate. What I recommend doing, you're only recording track number one, right? By default, OBS has you at 160 bitrate. It's recommended that you bump up your bitrate to the maximum on track number one here. So don't do 160, which is like a mid-level quality MP3. Do 320, which is a super high level quality MP3 quality. This will get your audio quality up instantly, just like that, doubling the amount of data for audio track that comes through massively increasing your quality in an instant. Now you're going to hit apply, but do not hit OK until now. Boom, now you're done with your settings. Now as you can see, my camera got knocked out of alignment here. Something similar may have happened to you, so stick around. If you added sources, if you added content into OBS and you changed the resolution today to 720p, it's easy to get it back into place by right-clicking on the preview pane, going to transform and clicking fit to screen, and it'll pop your content in to the size of your new 720p resolution. Then, whenever you're ready to start recording, see the start recording tab over here in the bottom right hand corner, go ahead and start recording. And you will get the recording confirmation down here at the bottom that tells you how long you've been recording and keep a very, very close eye on your CPU usage especially if you're using that X264 encoder I told you about a moment ago because it hogs up your CPU. And if that number is going above 50, 60, 70% right there, you may want to consider lowering your settings or upgrading your computer.
If any of this was confusing or if you'd like me to help you one-on-one -on -one set up your home studio, I literally have been doing that for a living for the last 10 years. Go to my website, link in the description below, awalldigital.com. You can click the schedule button and you can schedule one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. You can select your date, select your time, and then go ahead and enter your information and boom, I'm helping you one-on-one -on -one with your home studio, your YouTube strategy, your streaming strategy, whatever you may need, and helping you become more successful with online broadcasting.